logistic path. Um, I don't know if Mimi followed the same path as I did, but I flew from the United States to Amman, Jordan. I was there for two days. And then you meet at 6 a.m. at a bus station in Amman, and you drive west uh, to the King Allenby Bridge, and then you cross there into what is the West Bank. Um, that process takes the crossing uh, takes about three hours as you um, leave Jordan and enter uh, an area controlled by Israel. Uh, you then get on a bus that um, drives three hours. Uh, through Israeli controlled territory to a crossing into Gaza um, at the very southernmost border between Gaza and the area outside of Gaza controlled by Israel. Um, it's meters north of the Egyptian border, uh, sort of the Philadelphia corridor is. That bus ride is about three hours. You have a Israeli vehicle with sirens, uh, excuse me, not the sound sirens, but the lights on ahead of the bus and behind the bus. You were told in no uncertain terms that that bus will not stop for hell or high water. Uh, there's no bathroom breaks. Uh, and so I kind of intentionally dehydrated myself prior to that bus ride so I didn't have to go to the bathroom real bad. You then get to the crossing uh, between the Israeli controlled territory and Gaza. That's about another three hour process. I was on a bus with uh, about 25 uh, humanitarian workers crossing at that time. Once you're through that crossing into the southernmost, uh, the southwest, excuse me, the southeast corner of Gaza, you then enter land cruisers, kind of armored land cruisers. Uh, there was seven in our convoy. And there's four people in each of the vehicles. One of those persons is a driver. Um, and that's kind of a special UN category that you get certified to be. So that means that there can be three humanitarian workers um, of any stripe. That can be water and sanitation. That can be medical. Uh, other people I met there were in charge of documenting where unexploded ordinance is. So we're not talking just medical people. Medical people was a, a small portion of the larger group of humanitarian aid workers that were allowed in. So you get into a convoy of seven uh, land cruisers that then drives a distance of about 12 miles. That takes uh, 90 minutes uh, because you're driving over dirt roads, you're driving around bomb craters, uh, you're driving around piles of rubble. Uh, that convoy is also coordinated very closely with COGAT, C-O-G-A-T, which is a kind of civilian facing arm of the Israeli Defense Forces. <coughs> because as that convoy goes through, they need to make sure that they're not going to be driving through areas that Israel is bombing. So that path changes um, as Israel dictates. Uh, you then get to a safe house. And we got to the safe house at 5.30 p.m. So from 6 a.m. left the bus station in Jordan to arrive at the safe house at 5.30 p.m. I, that, I then was met by uh, local uh, Gazan members uh, working with the organization that sent me over who put me just into a normal car, like a Honda Civic hatchback. And we then drove five or six miles to Al-Aqsa Hospital. So that is how one gets into Gaza. <laughs> Uh, if you do the math, seven times three seats for humanitarians, that's 21 humanitarians that can enter. And there's two convoys a week in and there's two convoys a week out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So the only medical personnel getting in are some portion of the total number of humanitarians, which is 42 in or out per week. Uh, 